Okay, I'm old now, so I wrote notes. Um, but because I'm old, I can't read them, it turns out. Although I uh, sort of remember writing the notes. Um, let's talk a little bit. So the mission today, uh, it, you know, the challenge today was for us to talk about an idea for the uh, entrepreneurship ecosystem um, and what we can do to improve that. And, and I'm going to really follow on Michael's theme of collaborate, collaborate a little bit here. Um, and we'll talk about, obviously, the relationship between entrepreneurship and job creation out there. And I just wanted to say, to give you kind of an example of the perspective, this is Global Entrepreneurship Week that we're at right now. Um, you know, I know a lot of this is webcast, which gives it to a global audience, et cetera. Uh, but I will tell you, uh, just to give you the idea of the perspective of sort of where my idea came from, I, I recently I've been spending time with entrepreneurs everywhere that I can uh, to do my share in giving back. I recently taught a, a master class in Egypt on entrepreneurship. It was a White House State Department. Uh, effort. I did I judge the global entrepreneurship competition in Spain, which was about 50 different countries worth of entrepreneurs. We just did a uh, entrepreneurship event in Malaysia uh, that I just came back from for a few days. Um, I've been mentoring entrepreneurs in South Africa and Ethiopia, down in Colombia, uh, through Color Jar. Uh, we work with entrepreneurs that are right in the room, Alex at, at Rising Tide and Ethan at, at Give Forward. So I've been listening for the messages. Right? As we go around the world and talk to entrepreneurs and ask how we can help and, and look at the ecosystem and how to improve it, the message has been very clear. And the message has been very consistent from all these entrepreneurs all over the world. Um, and, and that's what I want to talk about today. I'll reply to that message. Um, but, but I think that I, I, there's something that happened. There was an event for me that, that just really, when I was on one of these trips, it really struck home. I was at one speaking event. Uh, that there were a lot of people from Silicon Valley and big-time founders of big-time internet company, some, you know, some of the internet billionaires, that we speaking at an event I was speaking at. And unfortunately, we were in another country, and what they were saying to some of these entrepreneurs is, if you want to be successful, move to Silicon Valley. And I was personally took great offense to that. Okay, that, that is not the message that I certainly came to deliver anywhere on the planet Earth. Um, and the next day, oh, by the way, right before I left for that trip, I spent a day at Google at their invitation, looking at all their innovation. And yes, extremely impressive, okay, to go to a company like Google and see how they do what they do. But the next week, I was in Egypt at that event. Uh, some people wanted to take pictures, you know, by the pyramids, a 6,000-year-old community out there in Giza. I was standing in the dirt of Egypt, uh, you know, far, far away from home, from Silicon Valley, from whatever. And a young Egyptian entrepreneur came up to me. And he was like nervous. And I said, what do you, he said, I want to tell you an idea. And I said, what are you so nervous about? And he said, you might think it's stupid. Uh, OK, so uh, he was already given that mindset that because he's a young Egyptian and not American or whatever it was, that maybe his idea was less. Well, I got to tell you something. I said, please, tell me. I stood there in the dirt of the 6,000-year-old community in Cairo, Egypt, and heard the most brilliant idea I've heard probably in three years, four years, better than anything I saw in Silicon Valley. My jaw was hanging open. I stood there and said, this is the best idea I have heard in years and years. It didn't come from Silicon Valley. It didn't come from the United States. It came from the mind of a human being who was thinking about a problem and found a way to solve it. So what is the difference between that guy and, and the, the entrepreneur here in this room, or you guys, the entrepreneur in Silicon Valley? The difference we're going to see, and we've been talking about, is infrastructure, is ecosystem. Silicon Valley does not have, nor does anybody, have a patent on good ideas or intelligence. That kid in Egypt was smart, as, as smart as anybody I've met on the planet Earth in many years now. He had just the same idea. What does he need? He needs us. Okay? He needs help. He needs infrastructure. And he needs ecosystem. And I'm going to talk about my idea to do that, because his idea was absolutely brilliant. Google didn't have a better one than what I heard that day. So when I talked to these entrepreneurs all over, I, I was Skyping uh, just before I came here. I Skyped with the entrepreneurs, the young lady in South Africa, uh, two other uh, female entrepreneurs in Ethiopia, my usual Skype mentoring sessions. They all want the same thing. They want a job. Okay? These are not people looking for a handout. These are people looking for a shovel. Okay? They just don't have a place to buy one or the funds to buy one. But if you gave them a shovel, they would dig. They're not asking me to do it for them. They're asking us to tell them how to do it. And I was absolutely amazed, like I said, they want to create value. They want to create jobs, OK? They want to take care of their family and their community. One of the projects we did in Egypt, we call it the jam lady, because there was a woman in a neighborhood who made the best jam in town. And we found a way on the internet to enable her to sell it to people all over that region of Egypt. 
the jam that she makes at home, and then to hire six more women, and then six more women, and build an idea into a business that only took microfinancing. But what did she want to do? She said, I want to get a job for everyone in my neighborhood who doesn't have one. That is why we exist. Entrepreneurship, contrary to popular belief, what we see is the Facebook movie. So what's the face of entrepreneurship? Money. Uh, what is entrepreneurship really about? Self-determination. It's not about money. It's about being able to take care of myself and the people around me. That's why we become entrepreneurs, and that's why we need more. When the jam lady in Egypt wants to get a job for everybody in her neighborhood, we better find a way to help her, because that's, not what, that's what it's about, not the money part, the self-determination part. So what's missing in this? Well, well here's my sort of, uh, I guess, challenge to you guys. And I think before I do that, before I give my big idea, let me tell you sort of what my challenge is, because uh, I just want to say that. Um, I know that, you, that our, our friends, our hosts here from Impact uh, have an entrepreneurship pledge. I think I was one of the first people to take it when you did it before. Um, everybody needs to make that commitment. Um, what I'm going to ask is, when I was on that 25-hour flight to Malaysia, there were empty seats next to me. Um, I wish more of us were doing everything we can. Mother Teresa once said, if you can't feed 100 people, feed one. And I think if everybody takes the attitude that I don't have as much time as I wish, I can't help every entrepreneur and fly to every planet, then find somebody, right? I don't always go to Malaysia. I went to Jersey City, New Jersey with Alex and spoke to a room full of hungry entrepreneurs that just wanted to make a living and create value. It was a, a fantastic night that we spent with these entrepreneurs in the worst part of Jersey City right here in our own country. So please, we can all find something to do to feed one entrepreneur, to give one a shovel and show them how to use it. I think that that's really, really important to make, take that pledge to give back in some way. But what's my idea? The thing that, and I don't know the solution per se, I think we're all going to have to solve it, but I like that Michael said collaborate, collaborate, collaborate. Because here's the problem, at least as I see it. When we're out there around the world, when I'm talking to the girl in South Africa, and she's trying to build this company, and it's a great idea, and she lives in a village, no kidding, right, that, that you know, there's one bus a day into town. They don't have the resources and the access we do, but her idea is excellent. Okay, but here is the problem. It's the, it's the network. It's the connecting the dots. It's the Match.com or Facebook. There's brilliant sites if you want to get a date. There are not great sites if you want to find the right person to help you. She was doing a publishing thing. I don't know publishing. So I'm standing there in another country thinking someone in this room really knows publishing and can help her. How do I connect those dots? How do I make that match? When I'm in Egypt and these kids, and another group that, that I wound up being on the board of, have a traffic application. Cairo has 18 million people in it. I believe at any given moment they're all in the same intersection. At least it felt that way to me. Um, they had a traffic app. Who's in the traffic business? Who knows that sort of the business? How do I connect them to them? Somebody might need a microloan. Yesterday, I was talk uh, talking to the folks from Opportunity Inna International here who I hadn't met before. How do we connect the dots? How do we find each other? We heard that, that uh, somebody that got up and asked a question before on the philanthropy side, we have independent pockets of really good work all over the place, but we haven't networked it together yet. That's the part, that's my big idea. My big idea was, I don't know, call it MentorNet, okay? So maybe MentorNet is the big idea. And MentorNet is some way that we can find each other, that we network all these efforts together, that if one of us is standing in South Africa and says, how do I help a girl launch a publishing business? You go on and you say, oh, these people know publishing. These people invest in publishing. This entrepreneur made her fortune in publishing. Somewhere there is a connection I can make to help that girl. The jam lady. We wanted to do some kind of mobile apps because everybody in Egypt has a phone. Who is it? There's somebody out there that would probably have developed the mobile ads for her for free for that community just to help out. Somebody was willing to give or, or somebody was willing to tell us here's how you have to buy it and here's how you have to set it up. So my big idea for you guys is some version of MentorNet or whatever you want to call it, but it's some way that we network the opportunities together and sort them in a way that is domain expertise, uh, that is functional expertise. Do you give micro loans? Are you, are you a mentor? Do you do, for example, one of the things I was encouraging people to do was offer more internships. It really doesn't cost you that much. Fly one of these people to wherever you are, give them an internship, and here's even a better idea. Right? Commit a little bit. Give them an internship where half the time they have to work at stuff at your company and half their time they're allowed to work at your com on their company and your office with all your people helping them. Give a little bit. So I was, you know, that, that's kind of an entrepreneurial internship. Let's be a little bit creative, but how would I match that internship? 
Because some of these kids ask me in all these countries, young entrepreneurs and older entrepreneurs, how do I get involved? And if I had a way online to find the right people to connect them to, every day when I'm out there, I could probably include all of us in the same conversation, and one of us in this room would be able to help the person that I don't know how to help.